Hi, this is Mr. Mac. Now, this is the concept video for rational exponents. So, let's start, as Mary Poppins said, at the very beginning. No, 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 that was Maria von Trapp. Okay, let's start at the very beginning. A to the n is an exponential expression. And this means, the, the n is an exponent, and it means use a, uh, use a as a factor n times. Well, let's come up with a more concrete example. 2 to the fifth means use 2 as a factor 5 times. In other words, we know that 2 to the fifth means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So that's our basic definition of exponents. The exponent tells us how many times to use the base as an exponent. Now, there are some shortcomings with that, if you think about it. Uh, the only numbers with this definition that we can use for exponents are counting numbers or natural numbers. What happens if we have, say, 0 or negative 5 or 2 thirds or something like that as an exponent. Now we've already dealt with some of these but let's just go back and review. First of all our definition x to the uh, you know use a as a factor n times leads us to the following idea. If we have something like a to the x times a to the y then uh, this turns out to be a to the x plus y. Uh, let's take a look at, at why that is. If we have 2 to the third times 2 squared, 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2. In other words, we use 2 as a factor three times. And we're multiplying that by 2 squared, which is 2 times 2. Notice again, we're using 2 as a factor two times. But what do we end up with? Well, we end up with 2 to the fifth. Now, ask yourselves, how did we get a 5 for the exponent with exponents of 2 and 3? Hi there, I'm back. Uh, sorry about the inter uh, interruption. Um, I'm not quite sure I was, but I was saying we have 2 to the fifth. And how do we get that out of a 3 and a 2? Well, obviously, we added the number of factors together when we were multiplying. So that gives us this rule that when you're multiplying powers with the same base, you add the exponents. Now, uh, a second rule is, is like it, and that rule is what do you have when you have x a to the x divided by a to the y? Well, our rule ends up being a to the x minus y, and an example of that might be 2 to the 6th divided by 2 to the 4th, we get 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's 6 twos over 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And you learn pretty early in math that if you have all factors in the numerator and denominator of the fraction, that the like factors can be canceled. And so we're left with two factors of 2. And the question is, how do you get a 2 out of a 6 and a 4? Well, obviously, you subtract. So when you're multiplying powers with the same base, you add the exponents. When you're dividing powers with the same base, you subtract the exponents. Um, well, one more thing. Uh, if you have uh, a squared cubed, what does that become? Well, see, this exponent here says to use a squared as a factor three times. So we get a squared times a squared times a squared. And then we can use this rule right here, which says when you're multiplying powers with the same base, you add the exponents. So that's 2 plus 2 plus 2, or a to the 6th. So basically, the rule is a to the x raised to the y is equal to a to the x times y. So when you have a power that's being raised to another power, you multiply the exponents. Now, with those three rules in place, we ask ourselves, uh, we, we start perhaps by asking ourselves, what is um, let's move this out of the way and see if we can't move these rules up over here to the side. Where was this? Here's the second rule right here. 
And the third rule, this right here, is this all together? Yeah, that's all together too, so we'll just make that one a little bit smaller. Okay, so there are our three rules over there if we need them. And I'm going to erase some of this stuff because it's kind of in the way. Now the question is, what happens when we have an exponent of zero? Well, if we were to use our rules, an exponent of zero might be something like um, uh, a to the 4 minus 4, because 0 is 4 minus 4, which would be a to the 4th over a to the 4th, which would be a to the 4 minus 4, which would be a to the 0. But what is anything over itself? Well, it's 1. So we define a 0 exponent, uh, a to the 0, to be 1. And that what that does is that expands our definition of exponents so that it includes 0. Now, what about something like a to the negative 2? Well, again, that could be like a to the 4th divided by a to the 6th, because by our rules, that would be a to the 4 minus 6, or a to the negative 2. But if we go the other way from that, that looks like this, a times a times a times a, that's a to the 4th, over a times a times a times a times a times a, and if the a's cancel out here, we'd be left with a 1 on the top. We would get 1 over a squared. So notice that a to the negative 2, by our rules of exponents, should be the same thing as 1 over a to the 2. So we make a rule that says a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. And what this rule allows us to do is to have any integer as an exponent. So again, we've expanded that definition of exponents so that now it not only includes 0, but it also includes negative integers. And the next question is, what, is, what happens if we have a fraction for an exponent? Well, that's what we're dealing with today. And so let's see if we can't take a look at that. So if we have a to the one-third, we might ask ourselves, what does that mean? Well, if we were to raise that to the third power, we would get a to the one-third times a to the one-third times a to the one-third. Because um, this 3 says use a to the one-third as a factor three times. But a to the one-third cubed is actually a to the 1. So if you think about it, a to the 1 third is the factor or the number that when used as a, here, let's do this, it's the number uh, that when used as a factor three times gives us a. So a to the one-third has to be the cube root of a, because the cube root of a is, by definition, the number that, when used as a factor three times, gives us a. And when we use a to the one-third as a factor three times, we get a. That means our rule is going to be that a to the one over n is going to be equal to the nth root of a. Now, what if there is a number in the numerator? Well, what if we um, raise both sides of this equation to the mth, mth power here? Let me just clone this. Let's take it down here some. And if we raise both sides of this expression, to the mth power, we get a to the m over n is equal to the nth root of a to the m, or, and this will be equivalent, the nth root of a to the m. So our rule for fractional exponents is going to end up being that if you have a number, a for example, raised to a fractional exponent, m over n, the denominator of the fraction becomes the index of the radical, and the numerator of the fraction 
becomes the exponent of the radicand. So 2 to the 5 6 is the same thing as the sixth root of 2 to the fifth. And that is our, the rule for ex, uh, fractional exponents. And with that rule, we will actually have expanded our rules of exponents to um, rational numbers. Now, um, there's a couple of things that we need to deal with. And so let's get started. We need to deal with rational exponents used to simplify radicals. So if we started out with something like the cube root of 5 times the square root of 5, how could we simplify that? Well, see, with radicals, this is a little difficult to do sometimes. But what we could do is we could think of this as 5 to the 1 third times 5 to the 1 half. Now notice we have two powers, same base, we're multiplying. So we would add the exponents, right? This would become 5 to the 1 third plus 1 half, which is 5 to the 5, uh, gosh, I can do this. This is 5 to the 5 sixths, because that's what you get when you add 1 third and 1 half. Now, one thing I will say here is that let's try, when they say to simplify, that if the, answer, if the question was given in radical form, let's give the answer in radical form. If the question was given in exponential form, then we'll give the answer in exponential form. So far, we have the answer in exponential form, but we should go one step farther and say that would be the sixth root of 5 to the fifth. And it's not really necessary to raise 5 to the fifth power in that particular case. All right, now, um, there are a number of other things that happen with um, simplifying ra rational exponents and, and so forth like this. But as you watch the solution videos, you'll be uh, presented with those kind of things. But this is, this is how that's going to help. One other thing that's true is these rational exponents can be used to help solve equations. So let's say, for example, we have the equation the um, uh, x minus 2 to the um, 2 thirds is equal to um, O16, and we want to know what x is. Well, one of the things we can do is we can raise both sides of this equation to the reciprocal power. In other words, We've got an exponent of two thirds here. If I put, if I raise this to the three halves power out here, then notice that this power being raised to a power, you'd multiply those exponents, and two thirds times three halves would be one. So we would get x minus two to the one. Now on this side, you do have to evaluate 16 to the three halves, but notice 16 is uh, four squared being raised to the 3 halves, and 3 halves times 2 is 3, so we get 4 to the third, which is 64. So if x minus 2 is 64, then x would be equal to 66 when you add 2 to both sides of that equation. Um, actually, uh, one of the things, since the uh, denominator here is 2. That means we square rooted both sides of this equation. We need to put a plus or minus in there. So we'll put a plus or minus here at 64. So x is, uh, and let me just change this now. We have x minus 2 equals 64 or x minus 2 equals negative 64. Now, if x minus 2 equals 64, we add 2 to both sides, we get x equals 66. And if x minus 2 equals negative 64, we add 2, we get x equals negative 62. So the answers are actually 66 or negative 62. All right, and that takes care. That's an example of solving equations using rational exponents. And that's going to be covered in more in future sections, but this was the time really to present that.
so that takes care of that. And that is the um, concept of rational exponents. And we're done.